RoboVM is dead. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mike from Game From Scratch, and today I have the grim importance of telling you of the death of a piece of software. The software doesn't generally die. It fades off into the annals of history, sure. Um, it gets expanded upon, changed, morphs into another product, sure. But rarely does a viable and effective piece of software just die. And that's exactly what happened here. RoboVM, uh, a product that many people depend upon today, is now gone. And it was technically killed off by Microsoft. Now, I sit back and I try to defend Microsoft quite often, to be honest. For developers, they've actually normally had your back. Uh, they get a lot of negative rap, but for the most part, if you compare them to, say, the behavior of modern-day Apple, uh, see their behavior towards Flash or HTML5, for example, Microsoft really did get an undeserved rap. And they've been spending the last three or four years really trying to improve developer relationships. And boy, oh, did they get this one wrong. Uh, so a little bit of backstory here. RoboVM is a piece of technology that enables you to run um, Java applications on iOS devices. And probably, and I've been following this on Game From Scratch for quite a while because it's very important to LibGDX. LibGDX is a... Um, cross-platform Java-based game engine uh, that's very, very popular, especially among indie developers. And RoboVM is the back-end technology they use to make it so you can run on iOS. Now, RoboVM obviously is used outside of gaming, uh, but, you know, being game from scratch, I'm obviously more concerned with the gaming side of things. And we've got a little bit of history here. Ironically, back in um, 2013, um, LibGDX actually used um, Xamarin for doing their backend. Xamarin is the iOS and Android port of the mono C sharp .NET implementation. And using something called, um, what was it, ILVM, they actually managed to translate the um, output from Java over to the bytecode of the um, Xamarin runtime. So you could then run on piggybacking on Xamarin. Now this had some downsides. Xamarin had a price tag attached of about $400. I think it was even more back then. And, um, the binding, the process was very manual. So when uh, Xamarin changed something, the guys maintaining this um, porting process actually had to you know, match the change. So it broke all the time. And then eventually RoboVM was released and RoboVM got rid of a lot of these headaches. Well, as history tends to happen with these things, things changed. Uh, RoboVM was actually purchased in this weird uh, twist of fate by a company called Xamarin. Xamarin again being the ones that make it so you can run .NET applications on iOS and Android. And all was fairly good. Um, there was some hesitation because at that point, at the very beginning, when LibGDX chose RoboVM, RoboVM was open source. Just before they were bought by Xamarin, they went closed source. And a lot of people were very scared at this point. However, Xamarin came out and they offered LibGDX developers basically perpetual developer licenses. So you could continue on no problem as long as you stayed with this development stack. So we were good. Everything worked out well. You know, there were some negatives. The source wasn't available. But let's be honest here. On a project like RoboVM, nobody is contributing to the source. It's just not the way it is. It's a niche product with niche knowledge and niche requirements to understand and maintain it. And the type of people that can work on a Java mapping layer to a virtual machine technology is very limited, unless you spend a lot of time getting up to speed on this kind of stuff. So this isn't the kind of technology that the community contributed a whole lot to. Basically, the RoboVM team were the prime primary contributors. So when it went open, when it went closed source, people really weren't that impacted as long as it continued to work and it continued to be available for free. And it was. And I had this conversation with Nat Friedman, who was the CEO of Xamarin at the time of the acquisition. And basically said, RoboVM Business Edition is now free for any dev that, any indie dev that uses LibGDX. And I said, yes, but for how long? And he came back and said the somewhat prophetic words of, for as long as I am CEO of Xamarin. Well, now, fast forward to about two months ago, Microsoft bought Xamarin. Now, it makes sense. Microsoft has been, Microsoft should have bought Xamarin years and years ago. It just makes sense. And then two months after they bought it, they open sourced all their technology and made it free. Also, all of their .NET technology. And there's the thing. The synergy between Microsoft and Xamarin was a no-brainer. Microsoft wants to reach out to iOS or Android support. They want to be this, you know, run anywhere guy that they're trying to push towards. Xamarin was a perfect fit. And as it stands right now, there was this $400 luxury tax to be able to port your .NET applications over to either of those platforms. And now that's gone. So that is a good thing for developers. However, just before all this happened, Xamarin bought RoboVM. And RoboVM was the .NET equivalent for Java technology. Well, if you know anything about Microsoft history, Microsoft and Java don't get along particularly great. Um, they used to be accused of a tactic, tactic called extend, um, sorry, what was it? Expand, extend, extinguish. 
No, I'm screwing that up slightly. But basically what they would do is they would hire a technology, they would uh, buy into a technology such as Java. They would extend it on their own platform such as, oh, sorry, Embrace. Embrace, Extend, Extinguish. It's not really important, but that was what the acronym stood for. So they would embrace a technology such as Java. They would extend it with functionality, such as what they did with uh, Java Sharp or Java Plus Plus, Java Sharp, I think they called it back then, uh, which enabled them to basically write Windows applications faster. But now all of a sudden they broke the cross platform. Um, cross-platform nature of Java. If you wanted it to run best on Windows, you use their version. And their version was, at the time, Java was crap. Um, the Java performance was absolutely crap. There was no JIT yet. Things were slower back then. Um, so their native version ran so much better. There were legitimate reasons for them to do this. However, they broke the number one selling point of Java. And if you look for an insidious reason in this, there's obviously tactics there. Java was trying to make the platform irrelevant. Java was trying to make it so that, you know, you could write code once and run it anywhere. And then all of a sudden, in an environment like that, why would you want Windows? You know, you could run your code anywhere. At least that was the thinking of the day. Uh, we know now that this whole write once, run anywhere thing is a myth. Even in HTML5, it's still pretty much a myth. But that was the thinking of the day, and Microsoft was threatened. So they took the um, embrace, extend, extinguish kind of approach with Java. It ended up in a lawsuit. Um, $2, million, $2 billion later, they learned their lesson. So that's not really a route they went through. And it actually cost them a lot of money because they actually had to go through and dig out anything they ever wrote in Java and pull it out and rewrite it, etc. So this was not a small loss. Now, Oracle is now the owner of Java. Back then it was a company called Sun Microsystems. Now the, the ghost of Sun Microsystems was, bio, was purchased by Oracle. And Oracle is, oh, what's the word, gigantic dicks. They're a terrible company. As far as any of the negatives you could apply towards any company out there, period, Oracle is that times three. Oracle sucks. Oracle is a horrible company, very anti-customer, anti-developer, just anti. They're a terrible company, terrible products too from what I've used them for. They're just one of those things that should not exist, and, and God, I hate Oracle. But anyways, Java itself is a little patent encumbered. There are a lot of problems with Java. Now, the funny thing is here, um, Android itself, did you know that Android was developed by a third party and then Google bought them? A lot of people don't realize that. Android was actually an acquisition. So Android 1.5 was actually bought and created outside of Google. And then they acquired it. And then since, you know, they've been running with it. The thing is, the people that originally created it knocked off the Java virtual machine. They basically, they didn't pay any licenses on Java. They just took it, created their own, and off to the races. And you can't do that in this day and age. And especially with the really screwed up U.S. patent laws, you really can't do this. So right now, Google is in the middle of a lawsuit that they are losing badly. So Java is a bit of a poisonous technology right now. They're, it's very... Suable, I guess we could say. So Microsoft deciding, you know what? We want nothing to do with this Robo VM. Uh, we came here for .NET. We got .NET. Let's spin down this Robo VM and screw it. I get it. That makes sense. I can understand their motive behind it. In all honesty, now why they didn't just open it up, you know, release the source code and say. We want nothing to do with this here community. This is yours if you want it. That would have been a good move. Killing it and screwing every existing Java developer that depends on this technology, that's a dick move. And Microsoft, unfortunately, took the dick move. Now, hopefully, they come back out and they actually decide to release the source code into the wild, you know, you know, wash their hands of it, take no stewardship of it, so there is no legal ramifications here. Just spin it off, make it their own independent thing, everybody wins. And that is what I hope eventually happens. But there's no signs of that. Right now, it's just right and truly dead. Now, if you are an existing customer, this is important. So here is the announcement from the RoboVM team. The RoboVM is now officially winding down. That means dying. Uh, it's going to be no longer supported, no longer working after, what's the date? Somewhere in 2017, I think. It's in here somewhere. Uh, but yeah, there we go. April 30th, 2017. So basically, you've got a year at the wind down. And then after that, um, it's gone. So if you're not transitioned by then, you're screwed. And if you want to go ahead and um, sign up for a license now, you can't. It's gone. It's no longer a viable product. You can't buy RoboVM. If you currently have a license, it will work until April of next year. And by that point, you better be transitioned over to something else. Now, on top of that, the one class move in all this is they're offering a full refund to every single customer as of today. So... You know, you may be screwed from a strategic point of view, but at least you're getting your money back. So that part's a class act. That part I have to applaud them for. Good job. Not releasing the source code, screwing over all the existing customers, and basically, and this is a bit of a kick in the eye, 
And if you would like to, you can get six months free Xamarin subscription. It's like, yeah, okay. I, I made a gesture there that you can't see it through the microphone, but I bet you can guess it. So anyways, RoboVM is effectively gone. And that leads us for today, as a game developer with LibGDX, and what the hell is LibGDX going to do? Well, um, Mario Zechner, the, the maintainer of um, the LibGDX product, has come out and done a very, very in-depth post on this subject. Coincidentally, this entire thing that I'm talking about, I've also done it up on Game From Scratch. I'll do a link. It, it's got the whole thing overviewed and explained uh, as we go. So everything we're talking about in text form there. Uh, but he did do an overview of, you know, here's where we are. Things aren't going to work well for all the reasons we just finished discussing now. And here's what we can do going forward. And there are a couple alternatives out there. Um, there's mobile open JDK 9. And I'll let you go to the um, the Bad Logics forum or the, the blog post to see the exact reasons why he didn't choose each one. But um, there's mobile open JDK 9, code name one, which I should ask Mario at some point why he doesn't like it, but obviously not a fan. Uh, there's J2 Object C, there's Avian, there's Xamarin, the IKVM, which is the original way of doing things. And then there is the Intel Multi OS Engine. And this is a runtime um, powered by Intel. Now, I don't know where the lawsuits come in there. I'm assuming there's some safety because Intel is not a stupid, well, Intel is generally not a stupid company. So I imagine it's safe to some form. Uh, but that is the road they're going currently. It's a work in progress. It's probably going to be a little bit of a bumpy road. Uh, but they're very, very close. So this should be up and going very, very soon. Now there's another announcement in here, and I don't actually have story up for it, but I might be able to find it. There we go. There is also Bug VM. Now Bug VM took and forked the source code of RoboVM the first day where um, it went closed source. So it's not currently up to date. A lot of the functionality features that have been added to um, Apple products since probably aren't supported. Things like uh, Apple TV, um, uh, their new bit code extensions, etc. So there's definitely a, a gap here. This is a five or six month old version of RoboVM. But hopefully a, TV, a team builds itself around bug VM and it becomes an option as well. I, I don't know the status here. I don't know uh, how much support there is from this. I don't know uh, yet if any of the original developers have flocked behind this project, but there is an option and the possibility that the old, old open source version of um, RoboVM may come back to life with the horrific, horrifically named Bug VM. So there is some option there. Now, the LibGDX team, and they're very close, so this would be very, very soon. So if you're impacted right now, hopefully it gets more uh, solidified in the next week or two. Uh, but they are going to be porting to this different Intel powered back end called, uh, what's it called again? Multi OS. So hopefully that transition works smoothly. And at the end of the day, this is all meh. But what I would really like to see is Microsoft release that source code so the bug VM project could get everything up to date and then make it their responsibility going forward. Don't know if we'll ever expect to see this actually happen, but in an ideal world, that's what would happen. Uh, so, you know, not the happiest of stories I've ever covered. And for a lot of you, if you're not working on Java and you're not working on iOS, you really don't give a damn. And I guess I should mention that, actually. Uh, if you're a LibGDX developer, this only matters if you're targeting iOS. For all other platforms, completely unaffected um, in any way whatsoever. This is just the translation layer to make it so that Java applications can run on iOS. So hopefully within the next couple of weeks, LibGDX will have the new option up in place. Hopefully it works quite well. If it doesn't, we have this fallback that hopefully this bug VM project takes off and succeeds. And this all just becomes water under the bridge. But it means for now, in the next little bit, especially if you don't have that um, one year transitionary license uh, from a robo vm in the first place might be a little bit tricky to support ios for the next couple of weeks if you're doing a libgdx development and hopefully that's the extent of it after that let's hope everything is good and great and the world is a better place and one final time microsoft please just release the source code otherwise what you're doing right now really is kind of a dick move and i know you've been trying so hard to improve your reputation and this isn't a good move 
It's a small bit of the community, but it really, the optics of it make it look like you bought a competing technology to shut it down. And I know that's probably not what you did. I know it's probably you're trying to save yourself from a legal perspective, but the optics make you look like a gigantic dick, and you're doing so much work to try and make that not happen. Please don't do any more damage. Just release the source code, and we're all happy. Um, so that's it. Um, not the greatest news, but news nonetheless. See you later.